1.25 dabs is terrible. And it's worse than that, okay? Because that fork is stealing people's money. That fork is printing money for miners right now that are mining nearly empty blocks because there's no transactions occurring. And this is the reality that we're in. So you may have some cool theoretical points that maybe work out in cool theoretical land. But here in the real world where we are right now, the fork is causing a lot of harm. It's made the Bitcoin network less secure. It's caused developers and mind share to be wasted on a dead end project that is terrible, that linearly scales when to reach the globe, you need a much better scaling system like lightning, like tier two things. Bigger blocks will never work ever. That's it's go read O notation on Wikipedia and understand how math scales. And I don't mean you a dev, I mean, everyone else in chat. So the end result is people had to run an insecure wallet that overwrote their code from a person they did not know to lose the anonymity of their coins by having to split them to protect them, uh, to lose the right to be rolled into a transaction first from having more days destroyed and having older coins, which would have received priority depending on minor logic, but they used to, which, uh, so you've got an overwritten wallet, you've got loss of anonymity, you've got loss of coin age, you've got loss of developers, you've got loss of security through hash rate, you've got loss of brand awareness. And for what? What was achieved? What was achieved was some people stupid enough to buy that other coin gave their money to the people that were smart enough not to. And I don't think that that distribution has so much utility. Now you could say that maybe a fork of Bitcoin could be more secure than Ethereum. Yeah, I might buy that. But you know what else would be more secure than Ethereum? Keeping everyone in one ecosystem. And you know, if you want to do airdrops and you want to tie Bitcoin holdings to a new coin, you can do that the same way Byteball does with an Oracle and you just sign your transactions. You could do it by whatever way Lumens does. I guess I'll look at it before it expires on the 27th. Uh, there are ways to incentivize and uh, give investors in Bitcoin different plays and, and different experiments like side chains, like drive chains, like uh, altcoins with oracles that don't involve killing security, killing anonymity, stealing devs, stealing branding, none of those things. So okay, well, may, may I respond to that? Yeah. Okay, well, let me give you another animal analogy. So some species of birds have more chicks than they can afford to raise. Mm -hmm. And then the chicks have to fight and one of them gets thrown out of the nest or more, a certain number, okay? Mm -hmm. yep. So that's wasteful, but that's what happens in nature. Yep. So that's, that's what I like about forks. You're saying sometimes waste works. I'm yep. saying sometimes it's good to create conflict and to choose the victor and let the uh, the loser die. Yeah, well, that's what we have on coin market cap, right? That's like there's a thousand altcoins, right? And then there's no, the legacy I, system. See, I don't like altcoins. I like forks. See, here's the problem with your analogy, right? You you made an analogy requ which requires separate entities to compete, right? So you have like a logic system in each bird and you've got like genetic patterning, which makes them smaller, hungrier, louder, and there's competition at that level. But the competition that you've described in the fork level looks nothing like that because so many things are shared, right? So are you experimenting on proof of work? No, it's the same. Are you experimenting on wallet code? No, it's a fork. Are you experimenting on block timing? By accident, not on purpose. So what really was this experiment? You put a different logo on the coin and changed one parameter and made yeah, I don't think they should put a different logo on it. They should both both claim to be Bitcoin. Okay. So uh, how do you feel about replay attacks? I, I don't think that we should protect against replay attacks. I, I want things to be as close to being the same as possible so that it's as close. It's like a controlled experiment. I don't think you understand how a controlled experiment works. Your control has to survive. You can't kill your control as part of your experiment. Your control has to Look, be unfucked. Okay, with. I made an the analogy. Literally no, it's means... not exactly like a controlled experiment. 
but there, there's there's when it you is do the it, correct analogy you did make the correct analogy it just proves my point instead of yours when you want to do an experiment to choose a victor you need to leave the control the fuck alone and in what you're promoting you are not leaving the control alone you are doing every single possible thing to fuck the control up so that you'll never know whether the other fork should have survived or not so you you were accurate you did make a good analogy it just supports my point which i hope will become your point the competition can be had fair competition can be had and it will look nothing like what you have recently seen okay it's well, pure wait, loss okay, for everyone wait, involved wait, wait describe what fair competition would look like you build your own project with your own devs and your own brand you get your own mind share from the world you set your own prices you bring innovation to the table you do something better unique faster smarter stronger and preferably 10 times better somewhere so that people care to waste their time learning about it because there's friction right most businesses don't work not because you can't make profit on a sale but because you can't afford the friction of bringing a new client in most genetic algorithms don't work in trading not because genetic algorithms aren't smart and couldn't figure it out but because you run out of energy and money to fund them and they run out of money before they ever break even just like fusion you can get energy out of fusion it just happens to be a lot less than you put in so your idea of competition is fabulous but in the real world with real overhead it is unattainable because the energy that would take to generate an accurate experiment exceeds whatever value you could get out of the experiment larger blocks might work and they will never pay off as well uh, as the costs that have been incurred unless you're stealing from the idiots that invest in anything and i'm not sure that's i mean if you want to do that get drive chains and erc20 tokens on bitcoin and then you can have the people give away money to stuff they shouldn't it's better like you are literally supporting something that is stolen brand awareness lost people's uh, overwritten people's private keys was an unsecure wallet lost coin age lost coin priority uh is currently a broken network that is oscillating through way too many blocks and way too few blocks inflating and giving all the money to the miners that is what you support and that is all fucking terrible and the only thing that you have on the good side is that I like competition okay, and I like well, experiments. Well, I like those minute. things too, but you need to do <laughs> them. We don't have to agree on things. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, you know, you're, you're saying that all of these, you know, there are a lot of costs incurred. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think that there are less costly ways for the, uh, for the developers to, to, to pay attention to what the investors want, you know, but I, I just don't think that that, that has been happening. Well, why would it happen? Like, I, I don't understand why you think the developers care so much about what investors want. I mean, they're not even getting paid by the, divest, the investors. Why would they give a shit? Okay. They're well, literally if, not getting if, paid by these people you're talking about. So, I mean, why would they care? I don't okay, care. Well, let, let's say a, let's say a developer is wedded to a particular chain, which is not logically necessary. I think that they should, you know, work work on whichever whichever one is the most valuable. But let's say they're wedded to a particular chain, and they they do something that the investors don't like, then the other chain becomes more valuable, so their chain becomes less relevant. That's not how developers work. Developers. Uh, they the smart ones that have freedom to do what they want they like to work on interesting things and a developer is not going to shift from the interesting thing he's dedicated a couple years of his life to to something that pays slightly better which he doesn't like it's not going to happen and it shouldn't happen and the people that you're describing as investors they're not investing in the developer they're investing in some token that that developer may or may not hold I'll give you an example there's a guy named Vlad Vlad Zamfir He's an Ethereum researcher. He's researching a uh, proof of stake sharding, right? They want to stop burning electricity. They want to get scale. Those are the two things that they think will do that. And, uh, he holds barely any Ethereum. So do you see him like jumping to coins that have gone up in market cap because it'd be more profitable for him to do it? No, oh, no, it's not about got... profit. It's about, well, you know, that the ones who are, who are like 
the person you talked about, they, they will become less influential, you know, if they do something that the investors don't like. I don't know, think that's the case staying, at all. They're staying, in, in my example, this, this developer is staying working on a chain that becomes less valuable. Give right? me a single example of a single developer that gave up on a stupid idea and, and went to the more profitable idea. Like, no, it's not about profit. It's, it's about influence. It's okay. Well, tell me the developer that did that. Well, I, I don't like, know. I think you're Why? just dreaming all this stuff, dude. Right. Like, there's an ecosystem. No, with is, very no, few, all, yeah. There's very few crypto devs and we know what they're doing and they're not doing what you're telling me that they should be. They're not. So like you, you're once again, like if you would spend less time, like thinking about what should happen and spend more time measuring what is happening, you come up with much cooler ideas because what is happening is really cool. I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on and none of what is happening in any way represents the models that you're generating. Your models are wildly inaccurate, wildly. So, I mean, let's, let's choose a single thing. Let's choose a single point where we want to make something good happen. All right. I would like to see the Bitcoin network be the largest network for liquidity for the following reasons. In currencies, the one with the largest liquidity oftentimes has the largest utility. Can we agree with that yes, point? Yes, definitely. Excellent. And would you agree that it is easier to create liquidity from a finite group of people that are willing to invest in a single cryptocurrency instead of eight ticker symbols? We've got finite investor money. We've got eight ticker symbols. Wouldn't we have much more money if we combine that all into a single ticker instead of having eight? Oh yeah, no, I think altcoins are all ridiculous. I, you know, I, I think that's okay. all basically wasted. Excellent. So we agree that it's a liquidity war in currency. We agree that it's easier to get larger liquidity if you've only got to pump one currency liquidity up instead of multiples. All right. So yeah. I'll tell you why I think Bitcoin's the right one. And then I guess you could tell everyone else why you think it is. It has the highest hash rate. It's using equipment that is only useful for mining Bitcoin. So you can't resell it after an attack to reduce the purchase price of an attack. It has the largest developer community. It has existed for the largest period of time. It has the most advanced and intelligent developers. It has the longest uptime. We're talking about the guy who basically made proof of work popular, Adam Back. The guy who invented the term smart contract, Nick Zabo, uh, and they're funded to the degree where it's basically like a 10 year system where they never have to be profitable. They can do whatever they want without being profitable because Reed Hoffman and some guys were nice enough to drop a lot of money on them in Bitcoin and cash. And they're bonded with Bitcoin so that they receive Bitcoin. And as long as they're employed, it goes and waits for them so that they care about the value. So we've got the best 